Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about ulcerative colitis. So, let's get into it. So, first of all, let's define it. It is a form of inflammatory bowel disease that causes inflammation and ulcers in the lining of the large intestine and the rectum. It's a little bit unique because it can be classified by where in the large intestine it occurs. So you have ulcerative proctitis, which is by the rectum. So you can remember that P-R-O-C, that refers to rectum. Proctosigmoiditis. So now we have the rectum again, but now also the sigmoid colon. Left-sided colitis. So this is everything on the left side. So if you picture um, the anatomy, if you picture um, what the organs look like, this includes the rectum, the sigmoid colon, and the descending colon. And then finally, we have pan colitis. Pan means like across, everything. It includes everything. So the entire colon. Unfortunately, the cause is unknown. It is thought to be an autoimmune disease that can be triggered by things like your diet. So if you have a diet high in inflammatory foods like fats and milk, dairy, stuff like that. Um, illness, so like a bacterial infection, or medication use. Sometimes the overuse of NSAIDs can be associated with a triggering factor of ulcerative colitis. And then certain uh, groups of people are at higher risk. So of course the big one, a family history. So if this is something that runs into your family, you have you know, a first degree relative who has it, you are more likely to have it. Um, certain populations, so Ashkenazi Jewish people are more likely to have ulcerative colitis. And this is usually diagnosed before age 30. A mnemonic device to help you remember the signs and symptoms of ulcerative colitis is ulcers. So U is urgent bowel movements. When you feel like you have to go, you have to go right away. And then sometimes the inability to defecate. So you feel like you have to go and then when you reach the restroom, you can't go. L is weight loss low red blood cell count, so anemia. So sometimes when you are having these frequent bowel movements, they can contain blood. So you can become anemic. And because of all of this, right, uh, it throws off your fluid and electrolytes, you become dehydrated, you have low energy, you're fatigued. C, cramps, so abdominal cramping, this is uncomfortable. E is that electrolyte imbalance because now you're dehydrated. And then the second E here is for elevated temperature. So these patients can present with a fever. R is for rectal bleeding or rectal pain. And then S is severe diarrhea. And oftentimes there is blood, mucus, or pus in that diarrhea. Aside from the signs and symptoms, some other things we can do to diagnose our patient with ulcerative colitis include blood test, so we can see that they're anemic by doing a blood test. A colonoscopy, this is going to be our test of choice because not only can they visualize what's going on in there, they can also take a sample of the tissue and do a biopsy. X-rays or a CT scan can be helpful, especially if we're trying to determine the location, because remember, it's broken down by location, where in the bowel does it occur. And then stool studies can be really helpful as well. We're looking for white blood cell count, proteins, and to rule out other causes like infection. And it's important for us to know these things about our patients because there are some complications of ulcerative colitis. So those can include severe bleeding, a perforated colon, severe dehydration, inflammation in other areas of the body like the skin and the joints, and then toxic megacolon. This is when the colon is so damaged that it starts to dilate, and this can be life-threatening. So we don't want any of these things to happen to our patients. 
A mnemonic device to help you remember the nursing interventions for patients with ulcerative colitis is cramps. So C stands for controlling diarrhea and inflammation. So we'll use anti-diarrheals and anti-inflammatories. These are going to be your first line uh, medications. And then sometimes when the body doesn't respond very well to those, we might also do corticosteroids. But if you remember, this is not a long-term use medication. This is only meant for a short amount of time. R, we want to restore fluid and blood volume. So we're going to give IV fluids, we're going to encourage oral fluids, and we might put them on an iron supplement to help with that anemia. A, antibiotics and then avoiding lots of things in the diet. So avoiding high fiber foods, dairy, spicy foods, high fat foods, alcohol, caffeine, and gluten. Because those will just trigger it and make it worse. M, we want to closely monitor their vital signs. We want to monitor their bowel movements. So what type of bowel movements are they having? Are they having Frequent bowel movements, is it diarrhea, is it form stool, what does it look like? They're going to be weighed daily, and then we want to monitor their GI system, so we're going to do a really thorough GI assessment on these patients. P is for pain relief, because they have that abdominal cramping, they might have rectal pain. So, some things we can do for that. Antispasmodics, that's going to help with that abdominal cramping. And we can give other medications for that rectal pain, but we need to make sure no NSAIDs or no Tylenol. It's not safe for them to have these medications because they can increase the bleeding, and we don't want that to happen. And then finally, S. So we want to screen for colon cancer because they are at higher risk for colon cancer. And sometimes we do all this and it's not enough. Um, so sometimes these patients might need surgery, and that surgery is they can have a um, ileostomy, and that could be temporary or it could be permanent depending on what's going on with the patient. So there's a lot of education related to that surgery that you, the nurse, are going to have to give to the patient. So that was my video on ulcerative colitis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.